Okay, let's start section 3.5, which is solving nonlinear systems. So for the most part, you saw linear equations and you figured out where two linear functions may intersect. And that is where they intersect is what you are actually trying to find. That would be your solution. So this time around, we've been dealing with parabolas, uh, different types of functions. So what we're going to look at is, well, primarily, either two parabolas and figure out where they intersect or maybe where a parabola and a line intersects and so those are some of the different scenarios that we're going to look at now in order for us to uh, <coughs> solve these types of uh, questions there are three ways where we could solve them out okay so right here <coughs> methods for solving systems the first one graphing you want to find where they cross or intersect. So you have your two functions and you need to graph them out and figure out, find where they intersect and that would be your answer or answers. Uh, we could use a substitution method and we've been doing uh, that in Algebra 1. We did a little bit of that so far this year. And number three, what we've done a lot of is the use the elimination method or el addition method. And remember, in in order to eliminate, we have to line up like terms before we can add them together. Uh, we want probably variables on one side, numbers on the other, or we could set the equation equal to zero and then start um, eliminating that way. So it depends on your, how you do it, but we, what we have done so far is lined up terms and then eliminated them. So let's go ahead and move on. Try out some problems here. So pretty much what we're going to do is first, let's figure out how we're going to graph. Now, remember, in order to graph quadratics, you need to make a table and plot points. Uh, remember, it always helps, however, to figure out initially where is the vertex. So in order to find the vertex, if it's not in vertex form, then you better find the axis of symmetry first. Remember that is x is equal to negative b over 2a. And then once you find the x value, you plug that back into the original equation so that you can find y. So once you found that, uh, the, the vertex, then you can go ahead and find other points um, that are on both sides of the vertices or vertex. If you have to graph a line, then you need to remember, you got to have the equation in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. And step one, you're going to plot the y intercept. And after that, you're going to uh, plot additional points using the slope. And so you would have to add or subtract, or go up or down depending on what the slope is. Remember, it's rise over run. When you, got, when you are using the slope equation. All right, and there you go. So let's take a look right here at, let's see, which one can we look at? I would say that if you don't know how to graph, then you better come to tutorial. All right, we've talked about graphing a lot so far in chapter three, chapter two, chapter one. I think we've done it enough times, so I'll save you the uh, save you some time in the lecture. So let's go on. Okay, so solve the systems. Let's take a look at number four. Solve the system of nonlinear equations by using the graph. Okay, so remember, what we are doing. Bottom line is when you are graphing and solving, you are trying to figure out where exactly do the functions intersect. We have one right here, this point, which happens to be negative one, and then we have ourselves two, four, six, eight, ten. So at negative one, negative ten would be one of our solutions. The other one would be at two, negative ten. All right, and there is the we have found and solved the systems. Number five, well, take a look right here. Looky, looky, there are two parabolas, and they are not intersecting. 
So what does this mean? We have no solution. No solution. That right there. Now they're going to ask you to solve using a particular method and you need to make sure you know how to solve them using whatever desired method is asked for. Uh, number seven they say let's use the substitution method. So what we need in one of the equations is to have the variable by itself. And the bottom one has y by itself. Great. So what I'm going to do is take whatever y equals and I'm going to plug it in where y is in the equation. So I've got myself x squared plus, and let's put in parentheses, negative x plus 4, and then we're going to go ahead and square that, and that's equal to 16. So think substitution where you're going to move something or exchange something for another, right? You go to, uh, you go to a uh, hamburger joint and you say, hey, uh, instead of fries, can I get onion rings? That would be considered a substitution. So we're doing that same thing here. Instead of y squared, we're going to plug in what y is, which is negative x plus 4, and then solve it out. Now, here's the big thing. Once again, what I always see as a problem is that students will forget to expand this out correctly. So it's negative x plus 4 times negative x plus 4. So you're going to need to expand the binomial and then make sure you FOIL it out. Negative x times negative x, we got ourselves plus x squared. The outer is going to be negative 4x, the inner negative 4x, and then last, 4 times 4 is plus 16, and all of this is equal to 16 right here. So now let's go ahead and simplify things. We got 2x squared, we got minus 8x, and let's go ahead and move the 16 over to the other side. Uh, we'll subtract 16, this one right here, to both sides. Either way, we end up with 0. Because remember, we're trying to solve things, and when we solve equations, we set it equal to 0 most of the time. So now at this point, where we are, there are other ways for us to solve it. We might be able to factor. You could always use the quadratic formula and you can always use completing the square. But it looks like right here, I could factor things out. Let's factor out a 2x, and now I end up with x minus 4. And that is equal to 0. So one thing I'm not seeing in some of your homework is to make sure that you take each term and you set it equal to 0. And so divide both sides by 2, x is equal to 0 over here. We'll add 4 to both sides, and x is equal to 4. So we're almost done. What we actually found, now what we do know is that there are two solutions. Where exactly are those two solutions? Well, let's take 0, and let's plug it into your equation, and then solve it out. So that'll be the last thing. So if I plug it into the bottom equation, since y is already solved for, that'll make things a lot easier. And so, we plug in 0, negative 0 plus 4 is 4. So, one of my points is at 0, comma, 4. I take this 4, plug it in, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. So, one of my other solutions is going to be 4, comma, 0. And now, we have actually solved it all out. All right. There you go. Easy. Let's take a look next up at number 8. You may want to do this on another sheet of paper, uh, especially if you're not being able to organize everything neatly. And there's a lot, it takes up a lot of work, space. So once again, I look right here. Hey, I already have y solved for. So let's take this and let's substitute that in. So I've got 2x squared plus 10x plus 48 is equal to negative 4x squared minus 16x minus 10x. And let's go ahead. When we solve these problems, we want to set it equal to 0. 
You can simplify and let's set things equal to zero. I'll add 4x to both 4x squared to both sides. So I have over here 6x squared. If I combine these two together, that gives me negative 26x. So let's add that to both sides. We're going to add 26x. And then so 10 plus 26 over here is going to be plus 36x and then plus 48 is equal to 0. All right, so now, once again, we are at a crossroad where we can either use the Pythag or sorry, a quadratic formula. You can complete the square. You can maybe even factor. I'd say you should always try to look to factor because that makes things a lot easier than doing all that other business of completing the square and use the quadratic formula because I see right here I look at these numbers hey they're all uh, factors of multiples of six okay or sorry yeah so let's go ahead or sorry factors of six and so we can go ahead take six out or divide everything by six and then there we go now I look right here in my trinomial and I can go ahead and looks like I could factor that out now, what are factors of 8 that add up to 6? We have x plus 4 and x plus 2. Right. Once again, factors of 8 that add up to 6. So the only one combination that works is 4 and 2. All right. 4 times 2 gets me 8. 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. So we'll go ahead right here, we'll set it equal to 0, and we take x plus 4 equal to 0, x equals negative 4. Now I've got x plus 2 equals 0, x is equal to negative 2. So we're one step closer, we're almost there. And then remember the last thing is take our values of x, plug it into one of the top two equations, and then let's figure out what y is. So you plug it into the, looks like the bottom one might be easier, and you get a negative 4 when you plug that in. We have 0 as one solution. Okay. And then when you plug negative 2 into one of the equations right here, you'll end up with 16. And there you go. So that is the substitution method. The next method is using the elimination method, which you have done when we've been doing the three by three uh, equations. So we've been doing that in the first two chapters, and we're going to do it again right here. Uh, let's take a look at number nine. Okay. So when I look at number nine, remember the problem here is I don't have my variables all lined up on one side. So that's the first thing we're going to have to do. So let's simply take the top equation, and I want to subtract y and add 1. And so if all else fails, I mean, it's easier to have variables on one side, numbers on the other, or just move everything over to one side, whatever you like. I'm going to go ahead on this one, move everything over to one side. So I've got x squared minus, uh, it's going to be plus, sorry, let's try that again. It'll be x squared. And then it will be, if I subtract y to both sides, it'll be minus 8y. And then when we add 1 to both sides, it'll be plus 12 is equal to 0. With the bottom equation, okay, and now remember, what I want to try to do is line things up in the right spots. And looks like, let's go back. Don't know what I'm thinking right here. Because I try combining things that aren't alike. So I have x squared. Let's go ahead right here. We got minus 7x minus y. And then we have plus 12 is equal to 0. And now that looks a little bit better. Over here with the bottom equation, I want to line up the x's with the x's. So negative x plus y. And I want to go ahead and put right here plus 4. I want to add 4 to both sides from this bottom equation. 
And so now, I can go ahead and start doing some eliminating. Looks nice because right here, hopefully you realize, hey, I can go ahead and remember, elimination method is also called the addition method. So I'm going to go ahead and add these two equations together. And if you notice, y gets taken out. Great. Because I don't need all different types of variables. So I have x squared. Negative 7x plus negative x is negative 8x. The y's will cancel. And then we got ourselves plus 16 is equal to 0. Next thing you know, we got ourselves a trinomial. Hopefully you know what trinomials mean. You might be able to factor. Factors of 16 that add up to negative 8. I'll tell you what. It's a binomial squared. It's going to be negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Negative 4 plus negative 4 is equal to negative 8. So this happens to be one of our binomial squares. And so all I need to do is find what x is. And x minus 4 equals 0. x equals 4. So we have now found what x is. The last thing to do is figure out what y is. And then we'll take this 4, plug it into Probably this equation right there would make the most sense. And y is equal to right there. We plug it in. So we got negative 4 plus y is equal to negative 4. We'll add 4 to both sides and y is equal to 0. So my actual answer right here is at 4 comma 0. Okay. Remember, once again, what I did is I took this 4, plugged it into the bottom equation, and found y. Let's try this one more time. Let's see what we can do here with number 10. Now, I can't, if I add things up right here, I'm not eliminating an x, I'm not eliminating a y. And the probably the big thing I do want to eliminate is that y. Easiest thing to do. So what am I going to have to do here? I want to need to take this bottom equation and multiply it by negative 1. So what this will turn into right here is negative 1 negative 1, positive 8, positive 19. Okay. And then we're going to add things together. So well, let's go ahead. Let me go ahead and rewrite things. We got negative y is equal to negative x squared plus 8x plus 19. We add things up with the top equation. The y's will cancel. So let's try to just pay attention to the top and bottom equation. And so 9x squared plus negative x squared is 8x squared. 6x plus 8x is plus 14x. And 2 plus 19 is going to be plus 21. All right. Now, what do I do? What do I do? I could try factoring. I could try completing the square quadratic formula. What do you do? What do you do? Try factoring first. I noticed right here, I'm trying to do the factoring in my head. Looks like it doesn't work. So if it doesn't work, remember, at that point, you're going to need to use that quadratic formula or complete the square. You take your pick. So we plug things in, negative b, which is 14, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4, a is 8, and c is 21. All over right here, 2 times a. All right. We, let's simplify things out and see what we get. The main thing is that 14 squared minus 4 times 8 times 21. Plugging things in, what I notice right here is that this ends up being negative 476 over 16. Remember what we talked about about when it comes to the discriminant. If my discriminant is 0 or negative a number, then that means you have two imaginary solutions. So what does that mean right here? What gives? 
Well, that tells me right here, I can't say two imaginary solutions because remember, what I have are two functions, two parabolas. They're not crossing. So what that just tells us, instead of no two imaginary solutions, right here we'll say no solution for this problem because there is no solution. If it was just one parabola and it's imaginary, then we can say two imaginary solutions. Or, But right here, since we're trying to find two that cross, then we will go ahead and put no solution. All right. So it's going to be your job to figure out kind of as you go along, can you factor or can you complete the square or use the quadratic formula? And hopefully the more you do it, the easier it will get. Make sure you practice, practice, practice. And there's 3.5.